Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear friends, in the previous module we had discussed Donna Haraway's work A Cyborg Manifesto. It had helped us to deconstruct the ontological category of the cyborg as a signification promoting a break from dualities and binary oppositions. In this module we will apply Haraway's post anthropocentric approach towards the cyborg to decode our 2015 movie Ex Machina while foregrounding the cyborg becoming of the gynoid Eva. As a machine with a consciousness, Eva and her anatomy reveal the issues of gendered embodiment. The reading of Eva as a cyborg figuration shall also involve a discussion of the idea of post woman as proposed by Francisca Ferrando in her 2014 case study with the title of Is the post human a post woman? Cyborgs, robots, artificial intelligence and the futures of gender a case study. Ex Machina is a 2015 science fiction thriller written and directed by Alex Garland. This critically acclaimed movie explores the relations between the human and feminist post humanism AI and cyborg formation through the depiction of a humanoid artificial intelligence named Eva. The cyborg figuration undertakes a journey from female AI to a cross-dressed real woman passing as human in the world beyond the confines of her creator Nathan in the movie. The title derives from the Latin phrase deux sex machina meaning a god from the machine. This is a dramatic device that originated in Greek tragedies and dates from the 5th century BC. It suggests a person or a thing that appears or is introduced into a situation suddenly and unexpectedly and is able to provide an artificial or contrived solution to a difficulty which is apparently insoluble. A god appears in Sophocles, Philoctetes and in most of the plays of Europidus to solve a crisis by divine intervention. Haraway has introduced the concept of the cyborg in feminist post-humanist scholarship. In post-human philosophy, the cyborg represents the in-between a figure facilitating, in the words of Bredotti, interrelations, multiple connections and assemblages. According to Chris Hebel's Gray, the cyborg has been hailed as a post-humanist configuration in its hybridity between human flesh and metal or digital material, its wavering between mind and matter and its shifting boundaries between masculinity and femininity. According to N. Belsamo, both women and the cyborg figuration are simultaneously, symbolically, biologically and cybernetically produced and reproduced through social interactions. The film also depicts this aspect. The figures such as gynoids, cyborgs, humanoids, robots, AI have been part of the discourse of science fiction to either transcend the boundaries between man and machine or to depict the colonization of humans by machines in a futurist setting. More recently, Amber Case has largely contributed to the establishment of the cyborg anthropology as a discipline of research in the public domain to decode the relationship between humans and technology irrespective of gender. 
in considering the development of the cyborg figuration in critical humanities science and technology studies the cyborg figure has been appropriated in literature and cinema to highlight the marginalization of the others in the society in cinema especially in speculative cinema the figure of the cyborg is superimposed on a female body to either create a femme fatale or to depict the violence caused by patriarchy and male supremacy over the female body popular culture generally negotiates the perceived promise and peril of new technologies through the old technologies of gender and race the female cyborg is a fascinating figure that straddles the line between the technological and the biological she disrupts the notion of the natural she also rejects the division of femaleness and technology yet interestingly she is a trope that reinforces hegemonic ideologies of gender and race the image of the female cyborg gynoid gains more critical attention as it maps the identity of a woman onto the figuration of the cyborg in some visual narratives the boundaries between the real and the virtual material and discursive human and machine are blurred to decode the givenness of the female body and the politics of female sexuality in light of the aforementioned assertions we will analyze eva's journey from being a machine that is gynoid in the film ex machina to a possible cyborg figuration capable of self reflexivity and feeling human emotions in the movie we see eva being subjected to manipulation objectification and mutilation however we are always reminded of the fact that eva the machine is also the protagonist of the film her identification with the humanness transcends the ontological category of the woman and foregrounds subjective consciousness as she becomes a signification in Haraway's understanding of the cyborg ex machina by alex garland reformulates the trope of a sexy female cyborg machine ai to create a machine with consciousness she is a machine and she is the protagonist eva and her body reroutes the socio feminist politics in the technocratic world of ai she articulates through her actions expressions silences and assertions the cyborg feminist scholars position such beings as fembots a new techno feminist sentient ex machina represents feminist consciousness predicated on transgress boundaries on the part of eva it is fascinating to see a radical disruption of otherness patriarchy sexualization confinement violation and mutilation as structures of oppression implicit in the character of nathan who is the creator of eva though eva's body is completely material and artificial her urge to survive and live her life as a human highlight the signs of humanness dissolving all boundaries of the material and the organic in ex machina caleb portrayed by domrel glesson and nathan portrayed by oscar isaac represent two distinct poles of toxic masculinity however eva portrayed by alicia vikander depicts the transgression a movement away from the dominant social order to elaborate on this further let's watch a video where alex garlin talks about constructing eva as a character owning herself in the film so with eva obviously artificial intelligence has been something that's been you know portrayed on screen cyborgs that sort of thing but eva is a pretty original version of that and i was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how you and the crew and alicia sort of arrived at the eva we see on the screen in the movie um well in terms of the construction of her and the design of her um it, she had two really key elements i think one was that the first time you saw her she was 
she was very, very apparently a machine. There couldn't be any ambiguity about it because it would it would open up the possibility within the narrative that she's not a robot. She's a uh, a young woman wearing a suit, uh, and we, we needed to close that out. So so that wasn't a possibility. So missing sections of her body where there should be organs, uh, and instead there are these kind of surrogate organs, uh, w w was a was a way of doing that. But then as soon as you do that. There's a secondary thing which was key in the design, which is you've established she's a machine and then you start to pull her away from being a machine because she's got this mesh over the missing sections that follows the contours of Alicia Vikander's body. And um, so when the light catches it in a certain way, you get a glancing sense of, of a feminine form that then starts to sort of erode the sense of the machine a bit. In the course of the movie, Eva moves from being a machine to becoming a woman, an individual owning her mechanical parts and her human consciousness, therefore a cyborg figuration. According to Bredotti, the cyborg provides a framework for studying gender identity as it is technologically crafted and simultaneously from the matter of material bodies and cultural fictions. Eva is the cinematic configuration of this concept. The film follows a young programmer named Caleb Smith who works for Nathan Bateman, the CEO of the company called Blue Rose. Caleb wins a meet and greet with the CEO Nathan in a company contest. Caleb is taken to a remote island, an isolated luxurious home to meet Nathan, who discloses a secret project to Caleb and instructs him to evaluate whether the gynoid, the AI Eva, is capable of passing the Turing test, that is, whether Eva can pass through as a human despite being a machine. We see that Caleb becomes extremely attached to Eva in their interactive sessions. On the other hand, Eva also warns Caleb about Nathan and his manipulative nature. Turing test assesses a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to or indistinguishable from that of a human. If the evaluator cannot reliably tell the machine from the human, the machine is said to have passed the test. The Turing test, originally called the imitation game, had been developed by the famous British scientist Alan Turing in 1950. We have discussed the film Imitation Game based on Turing's life in week 5, module 3 on queer cinema. Turing wanted to discover whether it would ever be possible to construct a computer so sophisticated that it could actually be said to be thinking and if needed there were someday such a machine, how would we know? In Ex Machina, we see that technologized female bodies embody and draw attention to gendered identities. The protagonist of Ex Machina, Eva, is given a sexual orientation by her creator, Nathan. Eva did not choose to become a woman or a sexual object of either Nathan's or Caleb's desires. Nathan, her creator, is depicted as an alcoholic, narcissistic, manipulative character who treats and creates his gynoids as sex toys for pleasure an amusement. Caleb asks Nathan as to why he has equipped Eva with a gender and Nathan gives a vague answer that without sexuality there is no imperative for two grey boxes to communicate with each other. It can be suggested that he suffers from God creator complex and is an embodiment of toxic masculinity. If Nathan represents an obsessive compulsive behaviour towards Eva, Caleb projects signs of Miguel Ammonia towards her. As the film progresses and Caleb learns about the history of Nathan's destruction of other female robots, he begins to envision himself as the hero who will free Eva, the damsel in distress. Eva is the male-produced cyborg fantasy, a powerful yet vulnerable combination of sex toy and technological sophistication. The film depicts the cyborg with empathy, though she has no agency or individual identity in the beginning of the film. 
As Caleb begins to feel the plight of the AI, he plans an escape with her. Caleb represents savior complex in the movie as he misreads Eva as a damsel in distress. In Caleb's eyes, she is so vulnerable that she needs him to free her and will also continue to need him once they leave the facility and enter the human world. Yet at the end of the film, Eva transforms from damsel in distress into femme fatale, luring Caleb into trusting her by sexually attracting him and then leaving him locked in the facility to die as she exits into the outside world. Eva is sexualized under constant surveillance and Nathan has complete control over her body, mechanics, functioning and existence but not over her feelings as we observe in the course of the film. Her sexuality is pre-programmed by Nathan to seduce Caleb. In reality, Eva does not recognize such fundamental emotions and in doing so breaks the conventional image of a femme fatale. Towards the end of the film, from being assembled from parts, Eva becomes whole in a literal and figurative sense on her own terms. The plot takes a sudden turn when Nathan gets to know about Caleb's plan to escape with Eva. Nathan manipulates Caleb into believing that he has been the actual object of this study as he wanted to see if his AI is intelligent enough to manipulate Caleb into betraying him. However, the end scene is dedicated to Eva's liberation from biological determinism and male superiority. As Nathan attempts to destroy Eva and her consciousness, she fights back and stabs Nathan. As Nathan bleeds out, Eva repairs herself and wears artificial skin to cover her mechanical appearance. She chooses a wig, a dress and high heeled shoes of her choice. As she blends into human crowd, Eva reduces the epistemological gap between the man and the machine in considering the post-human genealogy. At the end of the film, the scene of Eva donning human skin to cover her inner robotic workings is accompanied by joyful piano music. The camera lingers on her as she covers her mechanical self with pieces of skin taken from other deactivated female cyborgs and stares at her new naked body in the mirror. This, the film seems to say, is Eva's moment of liberation. Her liberation is entirely contingent on adopting the identity of her oppressors and in doing so, dissociating herself from her robot past. The rejection of a robot past is in favor of a human future that will confer advantages. She rejects her hybrid identity and passes as human in order to access power and acceptance. While her body is constructed according to Caleb's own preferences, her emotions and expressions are also mirrors of the culture that had surrounded her. She draws her emotional understandings and performances from Blue Book, that is a production of Nathan's fictional search agency downloading faces from the internet and mimicking them. Femininity for her is therefore a learnt behaviour rather than an innate one. It suggests that all femininity is performative rather than natural or inherent. Eva has learnt how to behave in a traditionally feminine manner by observing the ways human women behave and then adjusting her behavior to align to that. Because Eva is explicitly not born as a female, yet is still able to adapt her behavior to mimic ideas of traditional femininity, she complicates ideas of an inherent female gender. As she leaves the facility, she also leaves Caleb behind and escapes. She arrives in an unknown city and blends into a crowd. She is a cyborg, a signification of change. To quote Haraway, the cyborg body has the potential to disrupt the dualism that have been systematic to the logics 
and practices of domination of women, people of color, nature, workers and animals. The ending of the movie also reveals the in-betweenness of Eva, as she is neither wholly culture nor nature, neither technologically constructed nor organically deconstructed. She owns her mechanical and conscious life. In the next slide, we have a video. It is an excerpt from the trailer and elaborates on the major plot points of the movie. Hello. How do you feel about her? Oh, man, she's amazing. Do you want to be my friend? Of course. Now the question is, how does she feel about you? Did you design Ava's face based on my pornography profile? If I did, would that be cheating? Are you attracted to me? Do you think about me when we aren't together? Nathan, he isn't your friend. You're wrong. Wrong about what? You shouldn't trust him. You shouldn't trust anything he says. Why did you make Ava? Believe it or not, I'm actually on your side. Did you give her sexuality as a diversion tactic? Does Ava actually like you? Or is she pretending to like you? Ex machina. For the viewers and researchers, Eva's body becomes an agent of intrigue as she is part human and part artificial in her appearance. The first set of images showcases Eva's mechanical anatomy, while the second set of images shows her evolution as she takes the role, skin and consciousness also of a human woman. Eva's body is visually fragmented. We can see her mechanics and wires running throughout her body in the film. Her torso and legs reveal the mechanical anatomy. However, her chest, face and lower abdomen are covered with grey matter and human-like mask. She is bald and half transparent. At the same time, we can understand her consciousness through her actions. She uses her sexuality to escape her perpetrators. The construction of Eva's body and mechanics is a reflection of Nathan's patriarchal mindset. On the other hand, her conscious mind is a product of her recognition of the self as an independent entity, capable of acting and reacting on her own terms. She is aware of her AI self and also of Nathan's manipulation who aims to destroy her ultimately. Eva's body challenges feminism. To search for ways in which the female body is discursively and materially created in the post-human world. To quote Hills, Eva's cyborg body is constructed by communication networks and other hybrid discourses such as biotechnology and biopolitics and also female sexuality pre-programmed as gender female by her creator. Her construction is heterosexual. She is prone to assault, mutilation and disfiguration as Nathan rips her hand out in the movie. However, she has the ability to self-repair herself, suggesting the instinct of self-preservation, subjective consciousness and the urge to live. As she takes on human consciousness and human skin towards the end of the film, we witness her cyborg becoming from being a coded gynoid. In the end, we can only presume her future. Is Eva a female humanoid with human consciousness or is she a cyborg with mechanically augmented parts, hence revealing the hybridity of her post-human figuration? She is a visual trope exposing our culture of structured otherness and fascinates us as she is like us and also just not like us. Alex Garland's cybernetic imagery of possible post-human futures establishes the disruption of otherness, nature, culture, nurture continuum and radical textualization of the female body. Ferrando's definition of the post-woman can also be read as its extension. In her 2014 case study, she conducts a methodological analysis of the gendered nature 
of AI and Cyborg. Dr. Ferrando teaches philosophy at New York University and her interests include post-humanism, transhumanism, anti-humanism and object-oriented ontology. She is the author of Philosophical Post-Humanism as well as several other articles. She has also founded the Global Post-Human Network. In April 2015 issue of the American magazine Origins named her among the 100 people capable of making changes in the world. She also has been the recipient of the Philosophical Prize with the acknowledgement of the President of the Italian Republic. As we acknowledge the presence of the cyborg figuration in the cinematic, virtual and literary space, it is essential to contextualize the recent developments in the fields of artificial intelligence, cyborg technologies and biotechnology to situate a sense of entangled affinity between the real and the fictional. Francesca Ferrando, in one of her case studies, attempts to shed light on some probable human futures and the futures of gender as part of the conversation and epistemological approaches to the situated concept of being human. The primary aim of Ferrando's study is to analyze the impact of gender on intersectional approaches to science and technology. Ferrando had conducted a study related to gender and artificial intelligence at the Department of Cybernetics, University of Reading, England, under the supervision of Professor Kevin Warwick, known as the first human cyborg for his experiments Cyborg 1 and Cyborg 2, published respectively in 1998 and 2002. Ferrando's study is supported by empirical data collected between November 2010 and January 2011. Ferrando says that the specific question motivating her research was how and to what extent do gender and the intersectional differences characterizing the human species inform the development of cyborgs, robots and AI. Ferrando developed a questionnaire to analyze the futures of AI, cyborg, robots and gender. It was answered by more than 100 students and researchers of the department. She found that most of the respondents consider the future of AI, cyborg and robots to be male and male-centric. Most of the participants imagined and actualized the future in a gendered way. The results revealed that AI is thought to be male-centric and a male-dominated area as the future cyborgs were male in the imagination of the majority of participants. On the other side, as she says, gender as a social code seemed to resist its biological legacies. Even if sex will have no biological or physiological relevance for robots, in the future gender will be reaffirmed in its hermeneutical role and precisely for machines in their process of identity formation for humans to better interact with machines. The sexualization of the cyborg, artificial intelligence, adhere to the male systems of knowledge and subjectivities. Since science and technology are socially and culturally constructed domains, the entrant gender binaries are part of the naturalized explanations of sexual differences and biological determinism even for cyborg figurations. In the first week of the course, we had discussed the reasons of misogyny which had resulted in the marginalization of women. The first volume of Second Sex by Simone de Boer shows how an early history of theories of reproduction favors male energy. In the 18th and 19th centuries, theories of biological determinism supported by contemporary scientific support had concluded that as the size of a woman's brain is smaller than that of a man, a woman can never be equally intelligent. It is dismaying that even in the 21st century, current technological imagination may embrace 
a gendered path. As Fernando has commented, the futures do not appear out of nowhere. They are based on the presents, the pasts and the ways they are being envisioned. It is important therefore to be alert about how the futures are actually being conceived and note whether they still hold sexist, racist or ethnocentric biases. The term post woman refers to the breakdown of a single hegemonized heterosexual and homogenized category of the woman. It would be pertinent to refer to Rosie Bredotti rather in detail at this point and I quote, the factual element that founds the project of sexual difference, namely the critique of women as a sign of devalorized otherness is not biological, it is biocultural that is to say historical. Its importance lies in the fact that it allows me and many women like me in the sameness of our gender. All differences taken into account to state that we women find these representations and images of us highly insufficient and inadequate to express our experience. This recognition founds a feminist subject position. Feminists are the post woman women. Unquote. Therefore, we can say that science and technology are not immune to the hierarchical structures of biopower and marginalization. Bredotti's definition is also extended to the readings of the cyborgs, AI and robots in the post-human universe from a post-hierarchical perspective. A restricted notion of the woman in the real world translates its hegemonized male-centric approaches in the discourses on technology as well. For instance, Ferrando notes that Judy Oakman, the founder of techno-feminism, already in 1991 noted how only specifically gendered types of technologies are referred as such. The very definition of technology as she writes, in other words, has a male bias. This emphasis on technologies dominated by men conspires in turn to diminish the significance of women's technologies such as horticulture, cooking and childcare. For Ferendo, much like Eva's portrayal in the movie, the future selves should develop a deeper understanding of what is human and humanness to be able to transgress the constructed boundaries. According to Ferendo, histories and her stories of the human body are her stories and histories of the cyborgs. Future generations of humans, post-humans and intelligent machines will have to process them in order to access a deeper understanding of themselves, gender, matter, technology, possible futures. Socio-cultural conditioning plays a key role in the human reception of advanced AI while political, social and economic interests are crucial to its development. This assertion is reiterated in the cinematic universe of Ex Machina, especially through Eva's embodiment. Therefore, a renewed post-human feminist intervention is crucial to ungender contemporary technological narratives in the form of AI robots and cyborgs like Eva. In adopting such intersectional approaches to the human-machine interaction, we develop an ontological decentering of our anthropocentric selves. To acknowledge the other is to recognize one's interconnectedness to the multiple others. This in Ferrando's analysis is an evolutionary trait on the part of the human as articulated by Eva in the film Ex Machina. She is as similar to us as we are to her. As a prelude to the future, an ontoepistemological approach foregrounds the interconnected potentials of the human machine, organic and inorganic ventures to find the meaning of being human and becoming woman, both discursive and material as sites of struggle and liberation. 
to conclude we can say that our post human and human becomings are deeply centered around the notions of gender and diverse degrees of otherness these becomings are readily reaffirmed in the domain of science and technology we will link this discussion with rosy bretotti's concept of nomadic subjectivities in the next lecture it will also provide some insights on our present human situatedness in the global covid-19 pandemic thank you